Hi, I'm Natasha Ryan, and this is our video series, Strong, Safe, and True, where we sit down and we talk with leaders in the security industry. Uh, today, we have some, I got to tell you, Jim, as a mom, some, some hard topics to handle today, but they are important to talk about, and that's why I have Jim Fuda here, co-founder of Crime Stoppers Global Solutions. Jim, thank you so much for being with me this morning. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell this to anybody that will listen to me for sure. And it needs to be heard and people need to listen. And I think that sometimes it's so easy to bury our head in the sand, but we can't do that. And so I really want to jump right in. You tell us your background and a little bit about what the global uh, picture looks like for crime stoppers. Yeah, well, to start, I, I did 33 years with the King County Sheriff's Office here in Seattle. Um, then I had a five day break. Um, I had it all set up, was on a plane to Pakistan. So I worked in Pakistan, Indonesia, and Bosnia for the feds as a trainer, and then a senior executive advisor to the Minister of the Interior in the Serb part of Bosnia, where I lived in Banja Luka for 14 months. Uh, when I came home, I, um, I went to uh, work uh, for Crime Stoppers uh, as the uh, Director of Law Enforcement Services, the local program here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. and, and what we... Um, started using a tip app um, in November of 2016. And we learned right away that our tips quadrupled and our arrests more than doubled. We're in the gaming generation. Uh, people don't wanna call the 1-800 number. So, I mean, I, I joke, I, I can't get my granddaughter to talk to me on the telephone, but she texts me back in 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. having worked overseas and known about all the corruption and the Balkan route that starts in South China, goes through the Middle East, um, uh, through uh, Turkey, Greece, and, and uh, all the way into Western Europe uh, with all kinds of type of criminal activity, and is I thought, what better way to use this app on those crimes that have no borders, that are corruption-based? So I picked human trafficking, terrorism, illicit trade, arms dealing, drug smuggling, cybercrime, and bank fraud. Went over in 2018, went back to um, Bosnia, um, and with you need trusted policemen. Uh, and how, how the concept works, let me back up a little bit, is that you have citizens observe what's happening in their communities, they can report crime anonymously through that app that it comes to a Crime Stoppers program. The, those tips go to crust, trusted law enforcement. And if your tip leads to an arrest and a charge, you get $1,000 US. Now, in these developing countries, $1,000 pays a lot a of year, money, pays a year's rent. Right. So I went and did back and did the beta test. I brought four, brought four countries together. Uh, with trusted policemen, I brought two outside the EU, Serbia and Bosnia, two inside the EU, Croatia and uh, Slovenia. I did one presentation, one press release, and had 47 tips in a week, which means people want to talk. They're afraid to. And right. then you put the monetary incentive there. Um, uh, I, I think you have a winning combination. If you have a winning combination in the States, Imagine you're paying someone a thousand bucks in these countries uh, that can stop some of this criminal activity. So that's where we're at. And the fact that it is, you know, there is that incentive, there's that financial incentive, which plays a huge role, right? In, in actually getting people to use the, use the app. But also, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, law enforcement isn't status quo in every country, right? It doesn't always operate on a fair basis. And so talk about the fear of retribution and how this app handles that. Yeah, if you can remain anonymous when you submit a tip, that fear of either government intervention by a corrupt politician or corrupt police officer or the trafficker coming after you. Um, I, a story I'm going to tell you is... is uh, is still, um, I, I get chills every time I hear it. Um, we met with a, a, an obscure group that rescues children in Serbia um, uh, more than a year ago. Um, 
we, this was an afternoon meeting we had with these people, an obscure building, obscure entryway. You push a button, somebody lets you in. You, the, the elevator doesn't work. You climb up five stairs of uh, stories and there's a door with cameras that are facing you. They're afraid of traffickers. Yeah. And so we end up in a, in a um, what I think was used to be an apartment and we're in a, in a, what would be a dining room and there's a conference table in there and we're talking to these people and they had just rescued two Syrian Christian girls that had been sold at age 14 in Syria only because they were Christian. They were brought through the Balkan route, brought into Western Europe where they were violated multiple times a day for two years. They had word prior that they, uh, uh, 10 days prior that they were in Bosnia. And instead of going to Bosnia to rescue them, because the borders are corrupt, they didn't want yeah. any, any issues. And they heard that the, that the girls were going to be coming into Serbia. So they waited. And that particular morning, they rescued these two girls. The woman telling the story starts to tear up a bit. And I asked, I said, but that's a good thing, right? And she said, there was a third girl. Had they got there in Bosnia, that third girl was broken off, brought to another Eastern European country, was strapped to a table where they harvested her organs, killed her on a table for those organs to the highest bidder on the black market. These are the kinds of things that people know about, that are afraid to talk about, that we can put a stop to at the source or the transit routes um, before it spreads. Um, uh, to to any other country. So someone listening to this horrific story, and the only reason I'm not bawling right now is because I did that the first time you told me the story. So someone hearing this horrific story that says, yeah, but you know, that's a one-off. That can't happen all the time. I want you to correct that thought process. That, that's me. definitely not true. It happens it happens every day. And, and I'm not talking just in the Balkans. We we go to other countries where where the value of life is is less. I mean, you go. To, let's let's say I I I'm a I'm a a poor illiterate farmer in let's say Thailand. I have a trafficker come to me, and I've got three daughters. He says, "I'm going to take those girls. I'm going to take them to Bangkok. I'm going to educate them, give them a job, and and they're going to send you money every month." The farmer gets a little bit of cash every month, but those girls are immediately brought to a brothel. Or the other way with the value of life. Imagine I have three daughters. I'm a poor, illiterate farmer. I can't make ends meet. Sorry, honey, you have to go with them. We need, to, we need you to do this to take care. We, we, the rest of the family needs taken care of as well. Everybody has a role to play. I'm working in Indonesia in, outside of Surabaya. And we cross a bridge. And there's a guy, with no, he's in his 20s no arms and no legs. They got him propped up on a post and he's bawling his eyes out and, and with a bucket next to him for change every day. So I asked the interpreter, I said, what is this all about? And he said, Ev everybody has a job to do, you know, for the family to support the family. And they would drop him off. I saw the truck when dropped him off one time early in the morning and it was like a, a VW van with a flatbed in the back, they just picked him off to two must have been siblings, sat him down on a post and he sat there to defecate and wet himself all day. And they come back at the end of the day and pick him up, bring him home. Horrible. So the, um, my point is the value of life in other countries is not the same of what we're used to. And, and that's that's a hard part, for, uh, uh, especially for a Westerner to see some of these things that, that go on. It just seems like a horror movie plot. I mean, it, ju it just seems so unfathomable sometimes when you hear these stories that someone could treat a human like this. But this, this is the reality that you see all the time. So when we had our initial conversation, I said, what do we do to help? How can we help in this? I mean, I, you, you hear these stories and if you have any sort of humanitarian vibe in you, you want to somehow help you help these people, help these countries. Like, wh what do we do? Well, let me go back a bit. And the reason I started in Bosnia is because that's where I had trusted cops and I had uh, uh, connections. Um, but we soon learned that beta test taught us two things. 
One is that Bosnia was not the place to start because they have, they call it three different uh, um, governments, but it's basically three different cultures. It's the Bosniaks, with, which are the Muslims, the Croats, which are the Catholics, and the Serbs, which are the Orthodox. If one likes it, the other two don't. Right. So, so we moved it to Serbia, where it took us a little while to build those trusted relationships, which we did. And I actually had Serbs here learning the operational side, side of things. And then COVID hit. They were here two weeks before COVID started, and, and a lot of it got shut down. We were having inroads doing with the State Department to, a government contract to, to work this. Now imagine a, a, a tip app that we get the tips, but then imagine the intel that we can get our government, CIA, FBI, whoever it might be, that can what they can glean information from those tips that 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 that, that keeps us safe. I mean, let's look at the fact I have actually have video of an airplane taking off from Belgrade Airport that's supposed loaded with arms, headed supposedly headed to Saudi Arabia to fight for us, for the Western culture. Instead, that plane diverts. It goes to Syria, Syria, given to those factions that fight against us. Then some of those weapons go in small caches back through the Balkan route. And some of those caches off that plane, the Charlie Hedbo incident where, where they mowed down those people in, in the government or, or in that building um, in Paris, plus that um, uh, concert where a hundred people were killed, came back through the Balkan route uh, uh, with, with those weapons. So it's obviously human trafficking, child sex trafficking is the absolute utmost worst but imagine the terrorism stuff we could stop, the, the arms dealing stuff, the illicit trade. Do I care if somebody has a pack of illicit cigarettes in, in the Balkans? Absolutely not. But what you have to remember is that those taxes that are not gleaned from that, from that pack of cigarettes, that helps keep that country in depression where they're at now. And plus the bad drugs we're getting from there, the, 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 the manufactured that we think we're getting what we are, it's black market stuff. It's, it's not to the quality or caliber that we're, that we're used to getting. So all that plays into the illicit trade part of this. There's so much to digest, but I think the, the message here is how we help, right? Is this is uh, an app that has the potential to affect every single country in the world. Absolutely. And we all need to pay attention. We all need to promote this as much as we can to, dis to get the information that could help on so many fronts. It's not, right. as you said, it's not just human rights. It's, it's stopping firearms trading. It's stopping Probably. potential terror attacks, not yeah. trading, but theft. But sure. yeah, I mean, Yes. So and how we have to remember is this app is in their local language that that and, and the, the, the elements that come come we, we put together a, a PSA, a public service announcement that we could air on their TVs. Some of the countries didn't even want to talk to us in the Balkans when we were there. So corrupt. We don't want any part of you guys. But the beauty of it is, is on the state run televisions, we run an ad or, 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 or a, a PSA is that that country still gets the, listens to the PSA and can download that app so they can bypass the corruption in, in, their, own, in their own country that we, we can still get that in, information to uh, about what's happening in that particular country. So it, um, it, it, it's a win-win. So what kind of support are you receiving politically here? Well, it, it's been a long process. Um, and, and like I said, politics play a big role in it. We were able to get a huge support in, um, in Serbia, um, uh, all the way up to their minister of the interior um, and their defense minister. Um, we hosted a, an event where they, uh, and we brought media together and a lot of politicians and, uh, and uh, movers and shakers in, in Belgrade. And uh, uh, they're ready to roll on this. We're, um, uh, we have the um, uh, fraternal, no, no, the International Police Association are the ones that are going to take, there'll be two or three people 
trusted people that are vetted that will be taking those tips. I've already done the presentations to those to those top investigators that are in charge of those crimes that I made, those seven crimes that I mentioned. And they're ready to roll to take, the, to take those tips and get that information out. And let's say that these investigators have 80% of a case done. Um, and that, that information that comes in through the tip adds that other 20% to it. And we've got a case solved. And that, that uh, uh, citizen that reports that anonymously um, uh, gets, well, it's $999 US because $1,000 is reportable. And, and we want to keep that person as safe as possible and, and, and not be reported. Okay, on, a, on an emotional level, right? Uh, you know, when you hear the stuff you hear, you see the stuff you see, I would imagine you're the type of personality that it's hard to shut down because there's always more to do. You want to get more done. You want to save more people. How do you shut it down and sleep at night after hearing these horrific stories and knowing how much work has to be done. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Well, here, here's the way I look at it. I, I've got, I'm, I turned 69 last, um, last Monday. I, I was Happy a late military, birthday. Thank you. I was a military policeman, 33 years with the sheriff's office. I've been in this law enforcement side of things for what, what, say, uh, 50 years now. And this is that opportunity that all I've learned um, is that ability to give back. I, I somebody has to has to do it, and and I know how to circumvent and, and build relationships, and that's that's where my forte is. And 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 I don't have a police chief I have to answer to, um, and, and I I know what it's the right thing to do. I, people say, God, you must be some crusty old guy. And I said, it's the absolute opposite. The heart, with me anyway, got softer the more you learn and the older you get. And that, um, it's the right thing to do. Well, I can tell you that somebody has to do it. And I'm so glad you're the person to do it. And I appreciate your time this morning. We can go on a deeper dive on all of this at another, at another date, because I know there's so much more to dive into on this front. But do me a favor and tell the people watching how they can learn more about the app. Yeah, um, they can go to um, csglobalsolutions.org um, or my personal website, Jim. Uh, Fuda at, uh, no, um, what is it? JimFuda.com. That's it. it is. I, oh, if I don't add the oh, www, no. I forget it. <laughs> but <laughs> but we, we've got the app on there. And if, if um, we're- I'll link it too in the article that I write. Right. And we're, we're, actually, we're actually um, trying to make inroads back into the State Department, you know, with, but with COVID and with the, you know, the regime change, uh, there's always somebody new and a slant that that you that you have to have to go with it. So we're we're working on donations at this point. If anybody's interested in, in donating, or anybody that wants a presentation or or wants to talk to me or get a group of people uh, together, I will be. I, I you you can't shut me up. I'll be I'll be there to talk about it. So so please uh, uh, reach out to me. Thanks, Jim. And thanks to all of you for watching. Please check back at premierrisksolutions.com for more videos just like this one. I'm going to write more information and include some statistics and some of those wonderful um, informational uh, graphics and, and slides you gave me because I think it's important people receive those. But thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks again, Jim.